S-L-C. Just the mention of these three letters can send shivers down the spines of most coaster enthusiasts. Vacoma SLCs are notorious for being some of the roughest and most uncomfortable roller coasters in the entire world. Most are steaming piles of poop. Some are tolerable thanks to updated restraints, and the newer ones actually have smooth track work as well. But what if I told you the best Vacoma SLC was one of the earliest ones? Because that's actually the truth. The Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers is easily the world's best SLC. And in this review, I will explain why. Balger and Mabier debuted the inverted coaster in 1992 with Batman the Ride at Six Flags Great America. And the model was a smash hit for B&M. The novel riding position below the track and inversions granted riders the feeling of flight. So it's no surprise other manufacturers look to copy this coaster model and find their own success with it. In 1994, Vacoma built their first suspended looping coaster, or SLC. Named El Condor, this attraction went to the park now known as Wallaby Holland. Rather than seating riders four across like the B&M inverts, the SLCs would seat riders two across. The SLC was designed to be a cheaper alternative, and the super compact layout was designed to be cloned. Vacoma would build eight more SLCs in 1995 alone, and to date, they have built 42. One of the installations from 1995 was the Great Nor'easter. And I have no clue how Maury's Piers and Vacoma even managed to fit this coaster on a surfside pier. The rollover is positioned mere feet above a water slide, and the rest of the layout narrowly avoids that slide staircase and several other buildings. If you've ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon, I feel like Vacoma took the pre-built SLC layout and kept changing the elevation and rotating the ride until all the clearances worked. The base SLC layout already has some of the best near misses of any coaster as you narrowly miss supports. So all the bonus near misses from the surrounding structures elevate the visuals to an all new level. It is one of the ride's biggest strengths. Calling this the base SLC layout is only a half truth. While everything after the lift hill is the standard layout, there are a few differences. One, the supports were modified to work around the pre-existing structures. Two, the station is in a different position. On most SLCs, you immediately head into the lift hill when you leave the station. On Great Nor'easter, you have to turn 90 degrees first to reach the lift hill. Three, and related to the prior item, the final brake run is shorter. Most SLCs have an initial brake run after the final element and then you turn 90 degrees into the holding brake. But because the station is where the holding brake usually is in Great Nor'easter, the first set of brakes are the only set of brakes. Yet the final stop is somehow smoother than usual. Great Nor'easter originally opened with a red paint scheme and the first generation Vacoma inverted trains with those infamous bulky over the shoulder restraints. These restraints combined with the coaster's poor track work and aggressive transitions were a nightmare. The ride was downright painful and loaded with head banging. After a decade of operation, Maury started making changes to their much maligned coaster. In 2006, the coaster received an all white paint scheme. Then in 2008, the coaster's name was awkwardly extended to Fly the Great Nor'easter, and more importantly, the coaster received two new trains at a cost of $1.2 million. These trains would feature vest restraints that would eliminate headbanging. This was a massive upgrade. While the coaster still tracked poorly and you'd still be jostled around, you at least would no longer get a headache. The ride experience from 2008 through 2016 was similar to the other SLCs that were given updated vest restraints, such as Six Flags New England's Riddler Revenge. During the 2016 offseason, Maury's Piers and Vacoma took an unprecedented step. They retracked roughly 90% of the Great Nor'easter's track at a cost of $4 million. It's pretty common to retract wooden coasters, but it is extremely rare for a steel coaster to retract like this, especially all at once. Vacoma would use their new track bending technology, and they promised a ride so smooth that even your grandmother could ride it. 
I was skeptical, as were most enthusiasts. We had little reason to believe this layout that had caused years of agony could actually be good. The coast reopened in the summer of 2017, with the name shortened back to just the Great Nor'easter. And the park was so confident in the ride's smoothness that the inaugural train was a load of grandmothers. And the verdict? The ride was finally smooth. Now it's not butter smooth. There are still some jerks and shuffling due to the compact transitions. But the end result was a fairly comfortable ride experience between most of the ride tracking well and those vest restraints. The only thing you have to watch out for is being thrown backwards or sideways into the hard seats. Before boarding the Great Nor'easter, you need to put everything in a locker. Due to how this coaster travels above both water slides and pathways, nothing can be in your pockets. And since this genuinely is in the name of safety, Maury's offers free complimentary lockers by the coaster while you ride. You then have to pass through a metal detector to even get into the queue line. And usually this coaster is no more than a 1-2 to two train weight. Maury's Pierce has fantastic operations on this ride. Great Nor'easter almost always runs two trains, and the crew usually has the next train ready to go as soon as the prior one hits the brake run, if not sooner. Maury's Piers is also an expensive park, which helps keep lines down. Wristbands cost roughly $70 to $80 per day, or you can buy an individual ride in Great Nor'easter for 9 tickets, which is roughly $9. As for which seat to take, I find the force is pretty similar throughout the train, but I strongly recommend the front row for the superior visuals. You will really appreciate all those near misses and the leg choppers up there. Once dispatched, you turn out of the station and ascend the slightly taller than usual 115 foot or 35 meter tall lift hill. The lift takes a very long time, but I don't mind that one bit because you get an amazing view of the ocean. I also love how the Vacoma inverts do not have a catwalk beneath you, so you can appreciate the ride's height and fall. Once at the top, you navigate the 98 foot or 29 meter tall drop. This drop twists to the right and has two awesome foot choppers, one with the water slide halfway down and another with a cabana roof on the pullout. Now this pullout pulls some solid positive G's, but it is pretty jerky. It's probably the jerkiest spot on the entire ride. You then navigate the picturesque rollover positioned above the water slide. The entrance in the maneuver maintains the positive G's from the prior pullout, and if you're up front, you get a wicked snap at the top. The brief lull in between the inversions has an incredible foot chopper with the star of the water slide mere feet below you. Then those in the back will get their time to shine on the second inversion when they're violently pulled downwards. The pull-out from the rollover has just as many positive G's as the first one, but this one was a little less jerky at least. You then navigate a large wave turn. While it doesn't offer any forces, you do have countless near misses with both a slide tower and supports. The resultant pull-out delivers a quick burst of positive G's before shooting into a snappy sidewinder. This is the jerkiest inversion on the ride as the sudden loss of speed at the top will alert you forwards. You then zoom around an OK 270 degree turn that leads into the inline twists. And this is easily the highlight of the ride for me. First, you have an absolutely terrifying leg chopper. Great Nor'easter is the usual one with the aforementioned sidewinder as you enter into the element. But it's even more effective on this one because you are not dazed from repeated headbanging earlier in the ride. However, you also have a secondary leg chopper with a zoom flume log flume above you as well. This is one of the best near misses on any coaster. Then the back to back barrel rolls are super whippy and disorienting because of how fast you fly through them. You feel the lateral forces pulling you to the side while you rapidly rotate. You also will feel like your feet will smack the nearby supports as well. The finale in Great Nor'easter isn't great. You round a relatively dull turn, and then dip down and up into the brake run. But unlike standard SLCs, these final maneuvers at least are not uncomfortable. They just feel like filler here. You then hit the brake run, ending your 2,169 foot or 661 meter long adventure. So what would I rate the Great Nor'easter? 
I would give this Vacoma SLC a 7 out of 10. This is a genuinely good coaster. I've long said that SLCs have action packed layouts, but their shoddy track work usually turns the Blitz of 5 inversions into a torturous experience, especially if they're the bulky over the shoulder restraints. But with all the improvements Maurice has made to the track and trains of Great Nor'easter, this is a decently smooth ride you can actually enjoy. The inversions are very disorienting between their snappiness and all those near misses. I still can't believe Vacoma somehow crammed this coaster into the Boardwalk Park. This is narrowly the best coaster at Maury's Piers and easily the world's best SLC. So those are my thoughts on the Great Nor'easter, the genuinely fun SLC at Maury's Piers. Have you ridden this coaster? If so, definitely let me know if you rode it before or after the renovations. I would love to hear any of your thoughts about this coaster down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.